Good morning and welcome to Christ for Today, the weekly broadcast of the Jamaica Baptist Union. Today we observe Black Awareness Sunday. Let us pray. Eternal God, you are present with us throughout our lives, even in the face of hatred, discrimination, conflicts, and when others plot to do us harm. We thank you for the teaching and example of Jesus Christ, for forgiveness and salvation, for his presence with us always, and for the service into which he has called us. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division, jealousy and bitterness. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy. Gracious God, help us to live together in unity and faithfully serve and worship you now and forever. Amen. Our preacher this morning is the Reverend Derek Sadler, pastor of the Stokes Hall Circuit of Baptist Churches in St. Thomas. A reading from the book of St. John. Chapter 6, verses 53 through 58. I will read to you from the New International Version. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drink my blood remains in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. 
This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died, but whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. The word of the Lord. Men and women that are under any influence other than God are under the bondage of sin and will remain in bondage until someone more powerful intervenes. The children of Israel were in bondage for 400 years. As a people, they could not become who God intended them to become. Generation after generation, they longed to live a decent life, one in which they could have dominion over their destiny. They longed to live the liberated life. But longing to be free alone won't make you free. They were like cage birds with wings to fly, but were surrounded by an environment that was not conducive to flying. So they had to move beyond longing to be free. They did not only long for freedom, but they also began to look for a liberator, someone who was more powerful than the enemy. Someone in whose image they were created. Someone in whom they could step into their purpose of having dominion. Someone who desired for them to live a decent life. Someone who rewards that hard work justly. Someone who could break the bars of prison and allow them and generations after them to soar. Who was this liberator? Who was stronger than Pharaoh, and mightier than Pharaoh and his army. He was, he is, and he will always be El Shaddai, God Almighty, for he is mightier than the mightiest. He was, he is, and will always be El Rohoi, the God who sees. The songwriter says he sees every weakness. He sees every trial, every mountain, he sees every teardrop and he wipes them from us. Today, the same God is here in the person of Jesus Christ. He is in our midst and he's concerned about our suffering, whether personal, systematic, or communal. And is not only hearing and seeing, but is ready to set us free from any kind of life that is not the liberated life. When we speak of the liberated life, we are talking about a life that has been released from the bondage of sin and is lived under the influence of Jesus, the liberator. But among us also, I must say, is a spiritual pharaoh called Satan, who is determined not to let God's people go. He is like the police in Minneapolis who would not let George go until he was dead. I might as well tell you then that in our own strength, we are no match for this taskmaster. So like the Israelites who longed for freedom, prayed for deliverance, and looked for a liberator, we too, in our longing to be free, must look outside of us and look to Jesus. The good news is this. That like Moses, the physical liberator, who said to Pharaoh, let God's people go, God sent his son Jesus, the spiritual liberator, to say to Satan, let my people go. The question then is how can we experience this freedom from an enemy that doesn't want to let us go? How can we then live the liberated life? It is by becoming like Jesus, who is the source of the liberated life. For a brief moment, I believe God wants us to take a fresh look again at what it means to become like Jesus and ultimately to live the liberated life. In the text before us, John chapter 6, verses 53 to 58, we hear Jesus, the liberator, proclaiming some life-changing words to persons who needed to receive the liberated life that he offers. The text suggests that they were bound by the traditional idea of returning annually to a feast, which by all indications only satisfies temporarily. 
and thus necessitates them coming back year after year. He speaks explicitly of eternal life, which in essence is the liberated life. Unlike physical life, this life requires more than manna, which has its limitation in that those who ate it died in due course. Words like these always, therefore, calls for a decision. You can hate him or love him. You can obey him or disobey him. You can agree with him or disagree with him. But the truth remains, whichever route you take, your life will never be the same. For some of Jesus' followers, it meant an end in their relationship with him. Not because anything was wrong with the words he spoke, but because they were not patient enough and willing to try to understand what Jesus meant. For the disciples, though they may not have understood right away at that moment what Jesus meant, they were willing to stick around. Please allow me then to leave two quick thoughts with you of what it means to become like Jesus and ultimately to live the liberated life. First, to become like Jesus and live the liberated life is to eat his body. How do we become like Jesus? It is to do what Jesus said in verse 53 when he says, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Here the body that Jesus is referring to is not his physical body, but rather the word of God. To understand what Jesus meant when he said he is the bread that came down from heaven, we have to look again at John chapter 1 verse 1. Listen to what it says. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Here Jesus, the bread of life, is the embodiment of the very word of God, who according to verse 58, is the bread that came down from heaven. So then, in essence, a Christian who lives the liberated life is one who involves self in the whole dynamics of the word of God. That is, the written word, the spoken word, and Jesus Christ, the living word. He or she allows this very same word to shape and guide him or her in living a life that is not limited by sin. He or she believes in the words that God utters, reads and meditates on the written word, and makes life-changing decisions that are informed by Jesus, the word of God. You see, my friends, man cannot live by bread alone but must live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So when we partake then of the bread in Holy Communion, it is an action that bears witness that in the same way we partake of this bread, so we partake in the living word of God, which is Jesus. It is interesting to note, my friends, that John 6 began with the story of Jesus feeding 5,000 people when the people realized what Jesus had done, they wanted to make him king by force. But this was not the kind of kingship that Jesus came about. They wanted a bread king, someone who could ensure that their bread never runs out. However, my friends, Jesus was the true messianic liberator who came to proclaim good news to the poor, who came to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind. He came to set the oppressed free and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord's favor. So Jesus had to escape from among them, but naturally they went in search of him. When the story picks up in verse 25 of chapter 6, the writer said, when they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? In other words, how could you, our bread king, leave us? Don't you know you are our king? But Jesus could see through them, and he cut right to the chase and tell them as it is. Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw the signs I performed. 
But because you ate the loaves and had your fill, Jesus had a better bread in mind. He calls it his body. The people had physical bread and was really coming back for more. The truth is that sometimes the belly full, but there is an emptiness. Garnet Silk would say belly full, but them starving. Ja, without you, we are empty. Fill us up with your mercy. This, my brothers and sisters, is the strangeness of lives that are not liberated. You are not broke, but you are broken. You are not alone, but you are lonely. You are clothed, but you feel naked. Friends, unless we become more like Jesus by feeding on his word in its totality, written, spoken, and living, we cannot live the liberated life. These wonders will always be our reality. Belly full, but there is an emptiness. Not broke, but broken. Not alone, but lonely. The result of all of this is that we end up living, but there is no real life in us. The reason some of us are not walking in our destiny is that we are living on bread alone. We are living on things that give us instant gratification, things that bring us fleeting pleasure, things that make us look good. So like the people in the text, we have to keep coming back for more. But I'm here to warn us that we can't live on bread alone. We have to stop feasting at the wrong table and begin to feast at the Lord's table. The Bible tells me in Psalm 23 that my God can prepare tables even in the presence of enemies. So you and I have no need to sit at the enemy's table anymore. We have no need to partake of the delicacies of Satan that makes us clamor for more yet unfulfilled. Jesus is the one who makes it possible for us to live the liberated life. And all he asks us to do is to first get our fill of the word of God and become more like him. I want to say to somebody, start dining at God's table. Start feasting on Jesus, the living word, and watch God transform your life as you become more like Jesus. Second, to become like Jesus and to live the liberated life is to drink his blood. Blood is significant in scripture, and we must therefore understand the meaning of drinking blood. Otherwise, we will end up like those followers who gave up on Jesus. Jesus said, when we drink his blood, we will have life. Why is this so? Leviticus 17 verse 11 says, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. In other words, without blood in the body, there's no life. Without the body, there's no blood. The two work together. What happened to the blood of Jesus? He shed every drop of it for you and me. The songwriter says, Christ's blood drops all the way. And because his life was in his blood, it means he gave his life for us. And because he gave his life for us, we must now live for Jesus. Therefore, to drink the blood of Jesus means to live his life, a life that is liberated from the bondage of sin, a life that is characterized by an intimate relationship with Jesus. So the next time you drink the wine in Holy Communion, be reminded that you are renewing your vow to live for Jesus. To drink and not to live his life is to drink unworthily. Can I tell you something about the blood of Jesus and how it helps me to live the liberated life? The blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary is what gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power. When I'm having a mountaintop experience, it reaches to the highest mountain and reminds me to remain humble. When in the valley of disappointment and failure, it flows to the lowest valley and comforts me. There are times when living the liberated life gets rough and tough, but the blood of Jesus soothes my doubts and calms my fear. 
and it dries all my tears. The final analysis, therefore, is this. Unless we partake of the body of Christ by feasting on every word of God, written, spoken, and living, and by so doing, becoming like Jesus, having infused him into our innermost being, we have no life in us. Jesus is the powerful liberator that has broken the stronghold of the enemy. This feasting on the word of God is indeed the first move towards becoming like Jesus and thus empowering us to live the liberated life, a life that has been released from the bondage of sin and is being lived under the influence of Jesus, the liberator. Unless we drink the blood of Jesus by living his life, one that is characterized by an intimate relationship with Jesus, one that is free from the bondage of sin, we have no life in us. God is calling us, therefore, today to come away from any kind of life that does not bring us fulfillment. Though we kept coming back time and time again, we are not being fulfilled. And so God is saying to us today, come to me and live the liberated life. Amen. Let us pray. God of the liberated life, in you we move, live, and have our being. Today we hear you speaking to us, challenging us to live the liberated life that you make possible for us through your broken body and shed blood. You know all those who desire to live such life, but are struggling, and so we place them into your care and ask you to lift them above the situation or the circumstances that are holding them captives. Let your Holy Spirit help us to avail ourselves always so that your written, spoken, and living word can transform us, that we may live through you and live the liberated life. Amen. i
Our preacher this morning was the Reverend Derek Sadler, pastor of the Stokes Hall Circuit of Baptist Churches in St. Thomas. We trust you are blessed by today's program and urge you, if you have not already done so, to accept Christ's offer of salvation. If you have made a decision for Christ, we encourage you to contact the JBU Center or one of our churches. Visit our website, jbu.church, for more information. We now invite you to share in the following opportunities for worship and service. The Jamaica Baptist Union congratulates our General Secretary, the Reverend Carl B. Johnson, on his appointment to the Order of Distinction in the rank of Commander C.D. for exceptional contribution to religion and community development with effect from Independence Day, Thursday, August 6, 2020. We also congratulate the Reverend Dr. Roy Henry, a former president and retired minister of the JBU, on his appointment to the Order of Distinction in the rank of Commander CD for exceptional contribution to religion and community development, with effect from Independence Day, Thursday, August 6, 2020. Part 2 of the Effective Praise and Worship Virtual Workshop will be held this Saturday, August 22, at 4.30 p.m. The presenter will be the Rev. Robert Edwards, who has been specializing in praise and worship ministry for 30 years. To register for the workshop, please visit our website, jbu.church. The Spiritual Empowerment Conference 2020 will take place from Friday, August 28 to Saturday, August 29, 2020 via Zoom. For more information and to register for the conference, please visit our website, jbu.church. We appeal to congregations to encourage, identify, and register members for what promises to be a great experience of fellowship and nourishment in the Word. By now, our ministers and congregations should have received a letter from the General Secretary advising that the JBU Renewal Project, which was announced at the 2020 Assembly, was on the way and that a questionnaire would be sent as part of the team's work. The questionnaire, which is the first phase of the program, has been sent and is intended to elicit information concerning our self-understanding with respect to our expectations of the nature, purpose, and values of the Jamaica Baptist Union. This will inform the steering committee on how to proceed with the renewal project. We thank those who have already signaled their intention to complete the document and encourage all other recipients to do so within the time specified. Thanks again, and we look forward to hearing from you. You have been listening to Christ for Today, brought to you by the Churches of the Jamaica Baptist Union. If you wish to make any comments about this program, we would be happy to hear from you. Call the JBU office during this week at 969 6268, that's 969-6268, or email us at info at jbu.org.jm. You may also write Christ for Today, the Jamaica Baptist Union, 2B Washington Boulevard, Kingston 20. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Jamaica Baptist Union. If you have no commitment to any particular church home, then we invite you to attend the Baptist Church nearest you. We are inviting you to be with us next Sunday, same time on this same station, when we will again broadcast to Christ for today. I am Gary Callum wishing you a blessed Sunday and thanking you for joining us. Until next time, let the peace of God abide with you.